Hey guys, Batjack JW. I got here is the Vickers Guide 1911 book, Volume One. I pre-ordered mine and it finally came in, so these are really cool. I uh, got mine the signature edition, which is signed by Lev himself. So Godspeed, Larry. Hope you're doing well. Get get better, man. We need you to survive. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go through the book. Uh, I'm just going to kind of fan through it just so we can get a, uh, enough time to view all the pages because this book is absolutely packed with stuff. You got the, all the people involved in it, of course, Ken Hackathorn and whatnot. And uh, I got to say right now, the photos in this book are just amazing. They really did a good job with the photos and everything. All right, so model 1910 we've got the trials gun and everything look at that um what appears to be serial number one and i know that they do actually have a photo of serial number one really cool uh, again i can't uh, tell you enough about how much the quality of the photos and everything and the paper that really show on this thing and I guess you could slow it down, the video down, or pause it if you want to look at anything in particular. But like I said, we got like 400 pages here to go. Um, really cool how it kind of runs things down about the features, different size things. Um, uh, you know, I found that interesting about the uh, sights being rounded like that that I knew of. A lot of things that I don't know, which is awesome to further, you know, educate and learn about something, especially a beloved pistol like this that I absolutely love. You know different types of uh, cut cuts that they did on the slides I thought this was really interesting you see the magazine release there it's got kind of a different uh, instead of the uh, normal screw that you see here 1912 production going and then you, as you start to see more and more as it was developed closer to what uh, we pretty much know and it's kind of neat about you know how they talk about the different stampings different uh, uh, things here which um, I value a lot because as somebody that uh, shops around for a lot of older 1911s myself because I'm a collector of a lot of them, um, kind of found myself collecting them and kind of I'll tell that story sometime how I really got to doing that. But, you know, of course the <laughs> typical slide scratch or the frame scratch there. Uh, really close up of the uh, the stampings of the pony and everything. Again, the photos I can't speak enough about them. The the photos are amazing. I thought this was interesting. A gauge board, uh, which appears to be something they would actually stick there to see if it's a kind of their their go or no go kind of a thing. 1913 production. Look at that. And then this is what I thought was so interesting. Light projector. I mean, literally, we're talking about like a 1911 being a, a flashlight. You got casings that are light bulbs. You know, the the battery compartment in a magazine, <laughs> which you got this, you know, which looks like a switch uh, the, to on and off switch right here that they adapted into the injector, um, the extractor. So. Yeah, look at uh, how the different, uh, I guess the ball cuts were different on the, the slide. This is a Springfield Armory, really cool. You got the flaming uh, ordnance bomb right there, that's really cool. And again, it kind of gives you a, a nice little look, a real close-up look of what, um, what those stampings would look like. And it's really cool, like when you go look at this book in person, um, it really does feel like you are like holding the, the pistol in your hands and just looking at it. That's how sharp all the images are. And there's a lot of good books out there, but I got to say I'm really impressed with this one. It's pretty impressive. The production dates, the uh, government models, and I believe that this is like what the uh, commercial guns were labeled as the government models instead of like the old military uh, stuff. They would designate as like an A1 or whatnot really cool stuff really um uh, really nicely engraved things and again you know really shows you a real close-up of the engraving that's really cool look at destructive testing you can see a fail point there that was seen early on 1917 productions um this is mostly real common to see in this kind of a condition i used to have an original one uh, a friend of mine's got it now uh, you can see in that kind of condition there. They really are kind of worn. Uh, 
that pony was really nice. I really like the way that looks. British contract stuff. Look at that. Really cool set. Blank firing one. That would be kind of neat to have. A Frankfurt Arsenal 1921 head stamped uh, casings there in the blank firing uh, 1911. Notice that it is different. You got there's no uh, appears to be no link, and you got a uh, barrel return spring here. So uh, shown here is an experimental blank firing uh, pistol developed by Springfield Armory on a Colt base gun 1918. This experimental prototype features no locking lugs on the on the barrel and no uh, barrel linkage there. Only uh, one intended. Uh, Used for the blank firing pistol would uh, was to be used as a training or training of horses in a cavalry unit. It's interesting. Okay, kind of interesting blank round. Gallery practice. I've never. This is. I mean, more and more stuff. I mean, there's so much out there that uh, never seen. And it's really cool to finally see some of this stuff, photos of it. And that's one thing that they talked about. They scoured uh, places to get photos of really rare stuff and collections and things like that it's just awesome look at all the different types of magazines and look at that the remington umc i've only seen a handful of these in person actual uh remington made uh, 1911s not to be confused by the remington rand typewriters but i have seen these I have seen these in gun shows and whatnot. And then uh, what I recently only found out about too was the North American arms uh, manufactured ones. That's crazy. I didn't even know those existed until recently. I was watching a, an auction thing. Serial number 46. Overview kind of tells you. And that's, a, you know, again... Just the way that they show you the placement of stampings and stuff, so it kind of gives you a little bit more information rather than before you just shovel, shovel over a bunch of money that, you know, you <laughs> to a collector. These are cool. The, the commercial um, production models known as the C prefix uh, firearms here. Those 19 lemons are awesome. I, um, I've got one with the C prefix. It's really cool. Kind of uh, pictures of the old manuals and whatnot. Colt Woodsman. Colt Ace units. I've got a service ace. That's really neat. And then, of course, you got the uh, ribbon here that helps you mark your place. Look at that. Really cool. I think the ace unit is uh, really unique and different, especially with the uh, um, that floating chamber design that they start going with. Super, the 38 Super. Got to be one of my favorite roll marks and everything on the commercial gun, especially on the other side where it has um, like that, where you see the uh, the layout there, big old the Colt and lettering, and here's a better picture of it. Just the layout's really nice. Really like that. Different types of sights. This is interesting. Different color. Looks like I got gold transitional models. And then, of course, my favorite is the Second World War. Uh, these ones are awesome. And, you know, just, and again, like this is so cool that they show you all of the um, you know the markings and what they mean and where they where they stand and all that that's really cool because it helps you identify things you know this one here Robert uh, Sears uh, inspector different ones different markings you can see so help you identify uh, you know when you're Kind of shelling out that cash. Educate yourself so you don't get ripped off. Um, that's more like uh, what I've seen. The uh, Guy H. Drury, I believe his name. Yeah, Colonel uh, Guy H. Uh, Drury. 
and the proof mark and everything. These are the World War II guys. These um, these guns are very interesting. They're kind of the Parkerized. Uh, they turned different colors over the years. Uh, mostly known as to me the the greenish color, and uh, talks about the incorrect keys grips and all that. This is, uh, I always thought this was more neat, the later war ones where they were starting to, uh, things were starting to get different. Uh, you got stamp triggers, narrow hammer and all that, you know, and things like Hackathorn has said about like these kind of things um, was, you know, first parts in the box, sometimes the last parts to leave, you know, kind of remember that. Ah, the, must re the much revered Singer sewing machines, as there it says, the uh, S Manufacturing Company, Elizabeth, New Jersey, I believe. that really cool I mean these things are like a house payment <laughs> a down payment on a house is what the things cost it's ridiculous Ithaca again I'm, you know I want to point out just how the photos I mean you can really see the tinted surface of the metal and everything now again really cool how they, they they go over and they show you all this stuff the um, spot hardening, the discolored marks, and I remember learning about that very early on. I almost thought, what's what's up with the staining? And it was the hardening. That, you know, this is where they took the extra you know time to harden them. You can see it here. Looks like staining. Remington Rand, the most manufactured World War II gun, as far as I know. Uh, they manufacture more Remington Rands than any of the other ones. That's why you see them constantly everywhere. And there's the uh, inspector mark. Uh, for, uh, I think they were probably going to... Yeah, Frank J. Atwood is the inspector right there. And then there's the errors. I've heard of these, the Remington Rand error uh, one. And I heard about different uh, things where the N, the number N, the NO thing is underlined or not underlined. Union switch and signal, these are very expensive. Swiss Vale, uh, Pennsylvania manufactured. Uh, these ones are very, very uh, expensive. I've seen, them, I've seen them all the time at the shows, but they want a premium for these things. That's kind of weird. I, I was wondering what that was. I don't think it really even says in it. Robert C. Downey was the inspector for it. RCB. The lunchbox one. I've heard things like that. But, um, you know, these books, i got to tell you that it was worth it all the way. Uh, the, the book is extremely well done. All the magazines, the storage. I've seen, so many, I've seen photos of those uh, barrels there housing it. Just give me one barrel, right? Just give me one of them. A sheet metal one general officer model national match development these are really nice uh, 1911 for sure Again, still rolling with the C prefix. Again, look at that. Love that roll mark. Looks like they uh, put different sights on them. I've seen those here and there higher sights and I've seen ones with these uh, just the numbers right there and of course the CMP program now offering you can get these um, the only thing I wasn't too thrilled about some of those that they some of them are refinished to a point where um, it's I don't know it's questionable you know it, it, yeah the historical piece is there but you know it's been refinished quite a bit it makes you wonder and I don't like the grab bag kind of thing. If I'm shelling out money, I want to know exactly what I'm buying. Really cool. National Match. Pre-Series 70. Commercial markings and everything. Now, suffix C on the uh, serial number. I saw one of these that's a Bob Chow. Uh, 
custom. I, man, I should have got that. Again, look at these grips. This is the old school grips, the brown, orange kind of marbled grips. Really like those. You can see them here a little bit better. Here we go, modern military and law enforcement section. This is cool stuff. You get all the you get all the different uh, markings there. You got stuff going that way, that way. I mean, there's just so much. This is cool. I mean, you can the Delta. nineteen eighty two dated uh military stuff on the wrappers and everything it's, it's really cool different ones there wow you can see just all the different uh are you, are you, vickers is talking about these on his um some of his uh podcasts and stuff with the delta the delta guns he was starting to build it's really cool to actually see some of these you know again you can see some like here with the uh the frank j atwood um marking so it's obviously a remington rand frame and that's the one thing that's really difficult about these is because there are so many different ones there's so many different makers and uh different you know military was hacking things apart putting things together they weren't caring about collectability they just wanted things to get back into service you can see there they staked on that pin to uh, house the uh, barrel link. Bar still barrels that were uh, loaded in these. All the different types of rear sights. That's a nice picture, actually. It's a really sweet picture. Beckwith presentation. I can't wait to actually like take the time to like read a lot of these things because they're just so neat, but this is just an overview of what you're looking at far as mostly just the images my my thoughts on it because um, these books are expensive the first one when it went out i mean i thought yeah you know what it'll probably pop up on you know amazon or something it didn't and the more and more as time went by i regretted getting it or not getting it and so when i heard about this that he was going to do this i wasted no time the minute that i heard that uh, pre-orders were open i went and bought both uh, volume one and volume two. I haven't even looked at volume two. We'll uh, do a video on that um, Hopefully you guys like this kind of uh, video just kind of going through and just kind of looking at all the stuff um, You can slow the video down if you want just so you can get a better look at this stuff. There's a Springfield Armory That's really cool, but I just wanted to kind of grab it throw it on the table and uh, Kind of give you a video on it give you kind of a, my thoughts on it um, it's a really expensive book, but I think it's worth every penny. It's just one of those things that's just awesome to have. The Kimber Debt one, heard a lot about that. Um, really cool to see it. I always like those grips. Those grips are really cool. That kind of a golf ball texture grips me out. I make some of those. <laughs> uh, look at that. Military property stamp, the USMC on there. SWAT, LAPD SWAT, even says it. interesting the sis kimbers we're uh, seeing those in one of the uh, earlier books i've had it gives you a rundown and the of uh, the sis uh, pistols there that's cool the magazines and whatnot it's kind of neat that they made uh, they made a bunch of these it looks like a bunch of different models and everything we're getting down to it. We're on page 419, FBI SWAT guns. These are the Springfield Armories. Um, I think these were called the professional models and stuff. Here's the Bureau model. I've heard of that one. And of course, these are, you know, you kind of a small fortune to buy some of these. And then, but you get what you get, you know, in the end. But really cool. That's awesome. Two-tone, operator, Springfield Armory, the HRT. 
the FBI HRT uh, gun is essentially the same gun as the FBI SWAT. Got an additional light rail Delta Force established uh, the operational requirement for uh, integrated uh, rail, light rail. And uh, you know, so it's kind of cool. They talk a lot at Wilson Combat produced the first integral uh, light rail. There's the uh, <laughs> the the Colt, um, the government. The basically it's the rail gun, but they made it uh, flat dark earth. There's that one. Interesting. Uh, here you can see, I mean, this is one thing, I, I, I'm not trying to knock a certain gun or anything, but here you can see down in there, just by the photo too, where the the, the paint or the coating didn't, I mean, it just looks like they just took this thing out in the yard and sprayed it. Um, I don't know. I'm not too wild about it. I'd rather just have the rail gun itself, but it's cool. It's out there. It's They're collectible, especially the one with the USMC uh, marking on it. And of course, there's the uh, index, and it closes out with a really cool picture of Larry on his bike, and everything like that. So, really cool book. Again, awesome stuff. There it is, the guide. Hopefully, it's not too much of a long video. And of course, the uh, the dust jacket there, and there. So, I don't regret getting it. Uh, this is volume one. Thanks for watching. I'm Batjack JW.